So archers, we, uh, yeah, like you said, on attack especially, just keeping Manny and Holman was yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah, the one thing that did surprise me about the archers is Ryan Ambler. How do you feel about Ryan Ambler? I – how do I feel about them keeping him? Yeah, because I was kind of in the mindset that they would keep Danny Ipe as a transition midi, fastest guy in the PLL. Ryan Ambler's a good player, and I get that he played with Tom Schreiber at uh, at Princeton, but I thought Danny Ipe was a better choice there, just my how, opinion. How many guys do you think that went unprotected that'll actually, that they'll actually lose? Do you think they lose Ipe for sure? That's a great question because – you got to think about who they're going to pick up. And then on top of that, there's free agency yep. outside of the league, right? Yep. So maybe they know something we don't. And they know that guys are going to be coming from different leagues or whatever might have you. But I think I might get picked up. And I don't know if I want to risk that. But that's a and good I, point. That's a good point. And I saw a couple of scenarios where, like in this case here, they only keep two attack, but they have Pat yeah. Spencer was exempted. So assuming yeah, Pat Spencer joins. I was thinking about that too. Yep. And, and I mean, that's a perfect compliment right there. Manny, mm -hmm. Holman, you've got a bunch of guys that are, you know, Manny and Holman are primarily goal scorers, but they're right. capable of being 50-50 guys. And Spencer's, you know, he's a 40-60 guy in terms exactly. of percentages. Uh, exactly. And Ambler's more of an off-ball player, so he'd probably compliment, you know, a Schreiber or a Pat Spencer really well in that aspect. He kind of dodges, like you said, that two-slide dodge. He kind of works off of that a little bit in some crease work. I was, I, I mean, I wasn't surprised just because uh, numbers dictate who they get rid of, but uh, McIntosh yeah. and Sankey had to be painful for them to leave on. Yeah, McIntosh well. is tough too. And same with Sankey. I mean, Sankey didn't play great with the Woods, which is why the Woods picked up um, Jules Henningberg in the first place, which turned out really well for them. But yeah, I mean, you just look down the line on all these rosters of the unprotected players and it's, it's an all-star list yep. at the end of the day. I'll just rip through my list and then you can interject, but I had yeah. the the Atlas up next. Okay. And this one was weird too. And I'm wondering if this plays into, do the Atlas have the number one pick or the number two pick? I want to say they have the number two pick behind the Chrome. Chrome have the number one pick. Because they on attack keep two kind of goal scoring yep, attacks. That's they exactly don't have... what I saw too. Who's the initiator in that offense? Yep. So that's where uh, I saw even an inside lacrosse and a couple other guys were saying, does this mean – that they're feeling pretty confident they're going to end up with an AMAT. But it's not even just mm -hmm. an AMAT because uh, you figure, let's say somebody does something crazy and they take TD number yeah. one or somebody takes AMAT number one, you have uh, Sowers number two. You know, you're at least somebody like, uh, like, the, like the Atlas could take a Sowers. So you right. have two, two right. guys that could anchor an offense that they could, that they could take uh, with, their, with their first pick and fill yeah, that I think, hole. I think that's a great point to make too because, I mean, between AMAT and Sowers – you really can't go wrong. I mean, Amen had more. I mean, he had the most assists in a season ever. I think that speaks a little bit more for him. But between Sowers and Amen, I mean, they're still they're so young in their career too. Through they haven't played any professional lacrosse. They haven't messed with these guys before. But either Amen or Sowers feeding Eric Law and Ryan Brown or Connor Buzchek, that is scary. That's yep. very scary. And uh, who would you pick if you had the if you had the number one <laughs> pick in the draft? Who would you take? Because I'm not taking TD. I'm taking I don't one think of I'd those take two. TD either, even though he's so good and not just at face off, he's so versatile off the ground. But if I have the number one pick, I, I want to say I have to go with Amen. Even though Sowers might be a better goal scorer, I think Amen's more designed to be a feeder in that offense and that he can score goals, more goals if he wanted to. So I would I would go with Amen in that sense. Yeah. I'm a Sowers guy all the way. Sowers, but I, mean, I, like, I love I'm a both big of homer. them. Yeah, yeah. I love both of them. So, was, Are we still on the Atlas, uh, Baptiste? Yeah. That, that went without saying. I get that. Yeah, that's totally 100%. I'm trying to – let me see if the uh, unprotected list, see if there's anybody that surprises me. Tinny. I would say one guy. Tinny, yeah. Tinny is tough. And then Caveman Raphorse is another yep. guy. Um, because they're going to lose them both, I would, I would assume. I would assume sure. Tinny's getting snatched up. Yeah. And I would assume that Van Rapp is going to uh, see Van Rapp. I don't think that's as like, I would keep Durkin and Hartzell over Van Rapp horse. Mm -hmm. So I don't like, I agree. you know, I as agree. it played out, I could see where they had to make a decision, but obviously mm -hmm. they're hoping to hell that they're able to keep Van Rapp horse. Yeah. Another guy, Ryan Conrad, he yeah. really didn't play great with them last year. I mean, nope. he came in halfway through the season after playing an entire season of calls across, which makes a lot of sense, you know, but I don't know. Midfield wise, I think he would have been a really good two A midi and a really good initiator too for them. One, he had one of the about. one of the best 
seasons of a midfielder ever, in yeah. my opinion. And he won a championship, and he yep. was clutch. You know, yep. he and came they, up big in big moments. And they don't win that championship without him. Not they don't shot. get they don't get to it at least without him. Maybe in that game, you know, you could say it yeah. could have gone either way, but he was just he was too key. So losing Tinny though, that's going to be painful for him. And then Tinny, um, definitely. But hey, you got Baptiste though, so you lose yeah. Tenny in, in his production, but you uh, you're going to win faceoffs at least. Um, so moving on to the chaos. Yep. And this one, I think they have one of the most balanced rosters around, partly because in general. Yeah. They, at first, I'm looking at their attack and I'm like, oh, they keep Fields and Burn. Is that is that the only two guys that they kept? Mm-hmm. That is the only. Uh, yeah, it's the only attack that they kept there. But then I see they got. Austin uh, Stotts. That's that's the thing. Is like you just don't know what he's gonna do, and I hope he plays. Obviously, because like you said, he's disgusting. But I guess what's, we'll see. What's keeping him from playing? I just I don't, don't understand. Don't like, is, it's it's a great question. I mean, like you said, the lacrosse world isn't covered as much in media as other sports, so stories like that don't formulate. They don't come out as much. But. Yeah, like I said, I really don't know. I just know he's got um, rookie holdout is what the uh, diagnosis is there. All right, now I'm going to have to get to the bottom of that one. Yeah, there you go. Midfield, there was no surprises at all. Uh, class, 13 points for Caro, 14 mm-hmm. and 10. Mm-hmm. Jones, 7 and 10. Jones was a little bit inconsistent, I thought, but he's yeah, got to keep he was. him. He's, he's, too, um, he's too much of an attention dragger as an initiator, and even as a feeder, he was so good at Duke and in professional. That's one asset of his, of his game that he's really improved. And one guy I was kind of surprised about was possibly Miles Thompson. Yep. Because I think he works so well with Burn and uh, Connor Fields. Like, why would you mess with it? But at the same time, I see he's not as versatile as other players in there. So I, I understand it, but I may have done differently. And and we I forget what they had said each team loses, but it's not – like, the, the chance that they retain – like, as I'm sitting here and I'm like, holy crap, they didn't protect – this entire yeah. list of guys, I mean, the chance that they lose even one of them, you know, is probably right. that's about so, all they're so going like, to lose. The mindset that we have is like, oh, my God, all these guys aren't on the chaos anymore. They're gone. They're gone. They're in oblivion, different yep. teams. When in reality, like you said, I think the max that you can take from one team is four. So the yep. max that they're going to lose off that team is four of these guys. So overall, the rosters aren't going to look that different. But there's going to be those one or two guys that they kind of pick out of there that, that make a difference. And Johnny Serdic is exempted. And what have you heard anything about the prospect of him playing? No, I just know that he's military, and so is Matt Rees. And Matt Rees was a monster for them last year too at LSM. So. We get Brody Merrill, they got the geezer. Yep. I don't. Yep. I, I don't remember what they said the prospect of him being picked up was, but obviously they're going to want to try to keep him despite yeah, I mean, being that's old. Good experience. I mean, he's coach at Hill Academy. He's been playing this game for so long. Be a great guy to pick up. And just have as a leader in a new organization, I think. Uh, I was going to move on to the uh, to the Chrome. Chrome. Yep. Let's do the Chrome. All right. So there, Justin Gutterding, Matt Donowski. How do you feel about Matt Donowski getting uh, getting picked up here for the protected list? I mean, I'm looking at Karate too. You know, they're just a couple of geezers. Yeah. I'm going to look down the list here and see if there's anybody that surprised me that they didn't keep. I mean, I mean, I, here is, uh, I can Romar see Dennis. I can see keeping those two at midfield, and then you got McIntosh and Haas. I mean, they got a, a vet. It's a very yeah. veteran, you know, a Joel nice White. deep core. Yep. yep. Plus but uh, D, Connor Farrell. D, they were a little weak. Not weak, I wouldn't say, because at first I was like, ah, they just kept Manly and White, and that yeah. was it. But Brandon Mullins was, uh, he's unprotected, right? Yeah, Mullins is unprotected. I wondered if he, he, because I mean, he at one point he was one of the best defenders in pro lacrosse. Yeah, for at least yeah. a year or two. And it looks like they just went with their top midfielder, or not midfielder rather, but defense and Mike Manley. Yeah. But that defense was kind of discombobulated last year to begin with, so maybe they just want a clean slate, or they don't think that one of their guys is going to get picked because they didn't have a good defense. Yep. And Wolf and Gutterding on uh, attack. Oh, those is are a automatic. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Jordan Mack. Jordan McIntosh shot 44% from the midfield last year. That's, That's crazy. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. Will Haas, 2A midi, Joel White, super versatile, short stick, long stick, doesn't matter for him. And then Connor Farrell, their one face-off guy with a bright future. So, And it, the goalie, they were, they were damned. There was really not much they could do. They've got two aged goalies and then an inconsistent uh, third yeah. keeper. What, the Redwoods? Yep, Redwoods. Which... Not a, attack was easy peasy. Kavanaugh, yeah, yeah. Garnsey, and Hennenberg. I can't believe who, who who did Hennenberg play for? 
beginning of last year? He was – crap, who was he with? Um, wherever he was, he wasn't fitting in, though. I'm trying to remember where he got tri- – oh, he was with the uh, Whip Snakes. Isn't that right? Gotcha. Yeah, Whip could Snakes, be. yeah. I um, declared shenanigans. I felt like that was a little bit of league fixing, getting rid of one of the best mm. young attackmen in the league and just yeah, like, why yeah, the yeah. hell would you get rid of that kid early early season like that? But like I said, they weren't really utilizing him that much. And they had Sankey at the time, and Sankey wasn't doing too much. I think he was shooting under 15% whenever I was looking at the numbers and as soon as they put Henningberg in it, everything changed for them. It was like a total 180 on offense. And then I see they have Brendan uh, Gleason exempted Notre Dame, yeah. Notre Dame kid. And what? Matt Landis. Ugh. Was he, Oh, where was he? Um, oh, I do have him down there. Yep. Yeah, Matt Landis. Matt Landis. Yep. See, I didn't know that whenever I projected my team, I had, I had him and then um, Apple and Glazen are all protected, but having Matt Landis exempt, I mean, that's, that's a freebie right there, but that's a dirty, defense right there i mean oh, that, that's insane. that's a it's bunch insane. of guys that they're that they'll probably get back hugh Krantz, do you think they lose him uh i think they do lose uh do they lose him i don't know i don't know if anybody's gonna pick him up i know he's a really good player but from watching him last year i don't know if he's like a top defender in the league kind of guy and then if i mean there's so many other great defenders in here they might pick him they might not but even if they don't they already have such a solid defense so they can afford to lose him i think and and this is the one we haven't talked about yet, right? Kyle Harrison. Yeah. Did we talk Kyle about Harrison. did we talk about that before we started recording? Yeah, before we started, we talked about him a little bit. And like I said, um, three goals in ten games, no assists, and ten point five percent shooting. Yeah, I don't get it. And and I heard I heard somebody make the argument that Salcedo played shaky down the stretch that he played tough, but I mean I mean the dude's young and he's ripped. Yeah. And more importantly, he's a friend of my channel, so I'm all about him. Yeah, I see. I knew you'd be a big Salcedo guy, too, you know. And I, I actually started playing lacrosse in Fort Myers, Florida. He's a Florida kid, so I love him to death. You know, I love his game. I love everything that he's about. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I can't believe that they would give him up because he's going to get picked up. I yep. don't oh, see 100%. Him. Yeah, he had 19 points last year, 10 goals, 9 assists. He shot 23%, but that's not – you know, that's twice as much as Kyle Harrison. At the end of the day, if we're talking about protected players, I mean, for value, I think Salcedo is way more athletic. He can do way more. The only thing I can see is if they wanted Kyle Harrison to be more of an outside shooter type of guy, they wanted the attackman to initiate more. They wanted him as a step-down shooter, and they felt like he might have been better than Salcedo, but even that, mm. I mean, that's such a hot – you can't make that argument. So, yeah, Salcedo had a cannon. I, I saw yeah, him score the game two. the yeah. game winner with no time on the clock at Cornell, what, three or four years ago when yeah. Hughes played Cornell up there. That's that a beautiful insane. place to see a game is uh, Cornell. Yeah. You watch Syracuse play up there with the sun going down on the hill behind the stadium. Now mm-hmm. there's like a big parking garage fucking up the view in there. But yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful venue. Um. And then Berg. I would have taken Berg over Harrison, I think. Wes Berg, yeah, another guy. Let's but see. I get Perkovic, then, Adams, Walters. You know, I mean, I get yeah. those guys, but that Harrison one I was wondering about. And I get that they keep Perkovic. That makes obvious sense. Outside shooter, he stretches the defense, opens up the attack. Yeah, the, really the only surprise here. What, what do you think about uh, Joe Walters being on that list, too, as another older member of that team? Is it maybe something they're trying to do here? With, I mean, because Walters, I, I presume, you know, still rips still playing, rope. And, really, yeah, he still rips, but like I said, just getting older. Yep. I, I would I would take him, though, over at least because if you I would were take to put, over Harrison. Yeah, if you were to put him as a spot shooter and say, hey, this is what you're going to do with these yeah. attackmen that we have and all the attention they're going exactly. to draw. All three of those attackmen are going to draw attention and can create. I could see filling it up outside with, with shooters. but I, That's I kind of the way I saw it, too. And Salcedo did have the keys to the offense a good bit last year. So maybe they want to move away from that. I mean, they have the reasons. I mean, Kyle Harrison also liked the intangibles, like him being the GOAT, you know, the attention that he brings to your team, to your organization. That also means something, the leadership qualities across the board. That that also means something. But just from a play standpoint, I mean, Salcedo is definitely the better player. The whips were by far the, the thinnest at attack in terms of protected players, but they got yeah. Rambo so that he's not thin at all the little meat you know the meatball no 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 and actually on my prediction i i predicted this team down to a key every single player on here i have on my list as their um, protected players even drenner yeah drenner i I almost put drenner on there if you watch my video i kind of went back and forth with him 
but I get why they left him off because he's a, I mean, he's such a good player, but as an initiator, he's good, but they already have initiators. And he shot from that right wing. He was kind of like that guy on the post, but I don't know. I just don't think he's versatile enough for them. And there's so many other players. Like, they want to protect. You can't not protect Michael Earhart. You can't, I mean, their defense is what they really protected here, right? Four defensive guys and then their goalie. So that's five out of the, five out of the 11 right there is defense. And then you throw in Ty Warner, that's seven. And then John Haas is a two-way midi, that's eight. So in reality, they have eight guys. And then Jake Bernhardt, nine, who can play defense. And then they have Matt Rambo and Mike Chanita, two best yeah. offensive players. And what, like we keep saying, it looks really bad that they only had one protected attack, but Brad Smith yeah. was exempted. And yep. they had, what, five, six unprotected attackmen. Maybe yep. one of them gets taken and the rest of them continue mm-hmm. to fill out the roster. And the so. thing is, is that they're all Maryland guys. They all played in the same system. And – I kind of feel like they can plug in guys here and there and they'll work just fine. They might not be as good as the best guy that can work off ball or the best guy that can, you know, dodge off a two slide, but they will be good enough to compliment Matt Rambo and Mike Chanachuk. And then the other two A middies that they have. So like guys like Ben Reeves, Joe Lacasio, Connor Kelly, Drenner, Jay Carlson. I mean, you go down the line, people can only take four people from their roster. Yep. So at the end of the day, they're not in bad hands. They're going to have guys who they can put in their offense that can score goals. I wasn't getting that when I was first looking at these lists. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, what are these what people are they doing? doing? <laughs> yeah, I just think – and then not to mention Jeremy Sieverts and Drew – like I can literally name 10 guys here who you can put in that offense that will, that will score goals. Yep. Undoubtedly. So and then you got the meatball, the meatball yeah. Matt Rambo yeah, anchoring so they, it all. They said, fuck it, take, you know, four of our best offensive players. We have four guys who are almost just as good as those guys are going to take. And then Even Nardella. Like, I was surprised. Yeah. They, like, I, would, I was just surprised. I mean, is Nardella that good that he was worth protecting, or do they just need a face-off man? Um, I think part of it is they needed a face-off man, and I think he was decent last year. Let me see if 54, I can find 54%. Yeah, he was 54%. Trevor Baptiste was the league high at – or 63 so joseph so, was basically tied at second i think he had a few goals in there yeah he had six goals and six assists as a face-off guy nardella yeah that's that'll good. do it for you yeah that'll yeah, neutralize that's 12 your points 12 points is a face-off guy and you're still winning half of a more than half of the draws so yeah that, so that explains that then essentially second in the league in face-off percentage and he definitely had the most points as a face-off guy 